back stretches for lower back pain, do they actually work? Well, in this video, we're gonna go through five things. The first of which, the real pet peeve that I've got with these sorts of stretches and how they're positioned to you guys in terms of helping you with your lower back pain. And then we're gonna go through four really practical tips. How do you use it? How do you get the most out of it? What mistakes should you be avoiding? And how can you really use this potentially to complement your back pain rehab and get your back in shape? The first thing I want to get out of the way is these devices, the, the real problem that I've got with them is they do or can help. Having used it, having tested it, when we're talking about lower back pain, there is a way to use this to help your lower back pain in part. But the way in which they're advertised, I've looked through numerous videos online, and I'm going to show you with the spine in a second, exactly why I have such a big problem with using these when it comes to lower back pain. Now you can use them for things like posture, etc. but when it comes to lower back pain and helping lower back pain, the biggest reason you won't get help is if you follow the advice or the pictures or the videos of numerous people using these online. It will go through a very specific tweak that you need to do to make it actually effective. So let's go into the other room, get this on the floor, get this over the top of it and show you exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to the spine, particularly this L45, L5S1 region, which is the lower two segments in the lumbar spine, the most common ones to be injured with things like disc injuries or spondylosis or just degenerative change. So first and foremost, if you've seen any of the videos or any of the pictures, we talk about the positioning, the, the, which ties into the marketing, because this is my biggest problem. If you're coming to use this back stretcher for your lower back, your L5S1, your L45 region issue, which is generally the most common uh, region to be associated with lower back pain, there's, there's so many issues that are affected in this, but if we just talk about the position that you get into as you get into this position, the main apex of this curve is right in the thoracolumbar junction, which is the junction between your thorax, your rib cage, and your lower back. And that's where it's going to have this opening effect, opening out the discus, discs here, which is fantastic if you've got a TL junction problem. But if we're talking about a lower back problem, that's an issue, the positioning is just wrong. Not to mention the fact that most of the images I've seen are an ectomorph type person, someone very slim, who's invariably incredibly flexible, lying over this thing through the rib cage. Now, yes, it's gonna open your rib cage out, but that's not decompressing your lumbar spine. It's not stretching your lower lumbar spine, and that's a big problem. So issue number two is the actual positioning or the mounting of this particular device. How do we get into it? Now, some advice, some videos online will show you this, some of them won't, which is better. But one of the approaches has been to just simply lower yourself back over it. Now, if we've got a lower lumbar problem, this creates, as we get to this position here, it creates a tremendous amount of stress and strain going through these lower lumbar discs. It's like holding a half sit-up position as we lower ourselves down. Now, if you've got serious back pain, this is not gonna be the approach for you. It's gonna be very, very difficult to get into this position, something worth bearing in mind. Last thing we want is the mounting and dismounting procedure to increase and maximally increase pressure at the L45 and L5S1 discs that's gonna be a problem. So some of the advice is going to be to literally have it right up here and then lower back over. And you can see, it, it, it just puts me in completely the wrong position. My rib cage up here, rather than my belly button down here, is at the apex of the curve. I've got it right in my 12th rib region, and this just isn't the right position. Now if we imagine getting up off afterwards, me having to do that sort of thing, I'm doing a sit-up right after I've decompressed the discs, assuming I've got it in the right place that's just not going to be good for lower back pain. So we have to consider these things. So just to recap halfway through, we've got the marketing, the uh, stuff online that shows you how to use it, which is a bit problematic, the way in which it's positioned to you guys as users. Then we've got the mounting and dismounting procedure. and We've got the actual positioning of the thing. Well, if we address the positioning first and foremost, what is going to help you a little bit more if we've got lower lumbar spine issues? And again, if you've got a mid thoracic issue or a mid, mid to lower thoracic issue or a thoracolumbar issue in this region here that I'm pointing to in the spine, then of course, this might actually be a really good option for you. It's going to push that rib cage up and out. That's going to be great. But if you've got a lower lumbar issue down here, what we want to do about positioning is pull this up to here so we're actually getting the apex at the L45 region and that has a slightly lesser effect at the L5S1 than at the L34 region. That way we're actually getting a stretch over the segments that are of interest rather than down here. They're not really getting any mild extension put through them. They're just kind of sat there really. 
The next thing we want to talk about is the actual mounting procedure. How can you more effectively get onto this thing? Now, I've got it on the mid setting here. It's not the lightest setting and it's not the strongest setting. A better way to do this is going to be to get into a bridge position. Now, yes, you might be thinking, well, I can't do a bridge because I've got a lot of back pain. The bridge is going to be much better to go through than the act of doing that reverse sit-up position because that is going to put so much more pressure through the lumbar spine. With the bridge option, you're not going to have to lift quite as high to just slide it in and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about now. So essentially we get on our back here, I'll put it in the wrong position first so you can see what I'm talking about. So we come up into this position, keep your core engaged and as we get down, see uh, instinctively I want to put it in the right position, okay? So in a lot of them we're going to be something like, it's even difficult to do, this shows you what I'm talking about. So it's something like this and we're stretched right out. Now let's put it in the right position and see what happens. So we move it down and now you see my belly button is actually at the apex of the curve rather than what we saw before which was the belly button all the way down here and my rib cage up here being at the apex and now we can just relax and let everything hang there's going to be a little bit of extension force through the lumbar spine that's going to open up the l45 l5s1 discs take some pressure off there and you can really relax into this position you can see it supporting the upper lumbar spine into the into the lower thorax and this position is much better to be in when we finished we want to engage our core again get everything nice and supported and then we can just slide it out and lower it down. We don't want any spinal movement. We don't want any of this sort of stuff happening when we're taking this thing in or out of our spine because we're gonna get in trouble. So just to recap one more time, as I said, I instinctively put it in the right place, but we lift up a little bit, slide it in, find that apex here, that's roughly where it should be, and then lower ourselves over, and that way we've got it in the right spot. We're getting a nice gentle stretch through the L4-5 and L5-S1 region rather than up in the thoracolumbar region, which for most people doesn't tend to be a problem. And then we can just relax here. We do need to make sure that it is low enough so we are feeling that little bit of stretch through here. And that is how you use this thing. So when you're doing this, you don't need to have your arms crossed like so, but what you'll notice is it's the apex, as we're coming up around here, if we stop at the apex right here, we've got the belly button. Lara looks an awful lot more comfortable. Just give it one moment and put it in the wrong position for me. So move all the way down the device because this is how you see so often this device used and you can see the huge difference in comfort and in effectiveness when we put it in the wrong position. So if you go down that way, a little bit further. Oh. There we go. <laughs> okay. How does that feel? Not comfortable. Do you Not see here, her rib cage is sticking out because the apex is in completely the wrong place for a lower back issue. Now, if she's got some sort of sway back posture or something like that, yeah, we could argue that this is going to be helpful. But if we're doing it for lower back pain, then we, we are putting it in the wrong position when it's this high. So the one limitation with this particular bit of kit is that even at the higher setting, the apex, the curve, the rate of curve is not quite high enough for the lumbar spine. We find that a lot of people when they've got lumbar issues, particularly those lower lumbar discs, as I've mentioned probably about a thousand times in this video already, they are losing the lordosis in the lumbar spine, so it's too flat through here. The one issue with this is it can be helpful because it provides a more gentle gradient to begin with, but it's not quite sharp enough or pointed enough to actually have an effect of in, in the lower lumbar region in terms of restoring the lordosis as pointedly. We should have a lot more curve down here in the lower few segments than we should in the upper few segments. And using this sort of device can potentially help you progress onto using things like the towel, which can be a much more focused fulcrum at this lower lumbar region. So in terms of using this device for the long term, you might want to use this when you're a little bit more sensitive if you find it easier to get onto in the towel uh, than, than using a lower lumbar towel. But progressing onto the use of that lumbar towel if we're really working on trying to increase the lordosis in the lower lumbar region with those discs in mind is going to be a much more helpful way to go forwards with this sort of device. And typically time-wise, we'd only really recommend you doing three to five minutes on either device 
uh, in, in any one period. But for those of you that are sat at a desk, sat at home, working from home, you know, driving regularly, or just putting more pressure on your back generally, using these sorts of devices periodically through the day can really help to unload that lumbar spine and take off some of that stress and strain that builds up during the day. So it's a really, really valuable tool and it's so easy to use as well. So bear that in mind. You can always do it a couple more times, but that three to five minutes regularly can really, really help. So the last point in this video to really wrap it up and tie everything in nicely is going to be talking about, well, it's all well and good using these sorts of back stretches, whether it's this particular back stretcher, whether it's a towel, whatever it is, it is helping unload your spine when it's used correctly. And hopefully this video has really helped you. If you are using one of these or interested in one of these, then it's helped you reevaluate how to use it effectively for lower lumbar uh, originating back pain. But it's not the be all and end all. When you're using these devices, they are fantastic. But if we've got a lower back issue, using this to provide a degree of relief and decompression is fantastic. But we must do strengthening work. We must do rehabilitation work alongside that so that our body can more effectively hold things together and protect those lower lumbar segments for the long term. This in includes working on your movement patterns, making sure we're learning to hip hinge correctly, we're bending from the hips, we're not traditionally rounding our lower back, making sure that you know we could spend uh, three to five minutes using this sort of device or using the rolled up towel to unload those lumbar discs on a daily basis multiple times a day. But if you're sat down in front of the computer for hours on end, not caring about your posture, not caring about the fact that those lower lumbar discs are being squashed because we're rounding the lordosis significantly, then we're gonna be finding that it's actually gonna be very difficult to get any lasting effects. These tools really work well when done in conjunction with the proper rehabilitative exercises to build strength and competence in your core, in your lower back, get you moving right, able to do things like squats, etc., to move through ranges of motion effectively and plugged together as part of a more comprehensive solution, you'll be able to fix your back pain effectively. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, consider giving us a thumbs up. And if you do like these sorts of videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel to make sure that you stay up to date with all our latest videos, self-help, and just general guidance on back pain. See you in the next video. If you wanna learn more about the premium Back in Shape membership, there's gonna be a video somewhere underneath here. And if you wanna stay up to date or tune in to some of our more recent live streams and the Q and A's at the end of those, then that's gonna be down here. And remember, you can subscribe to the channel up here and hit the notification bell to make sure you know when we next go live so you can join us for our next live stream and Q and A.